welcome to AgriBaltech, the program that projects the significance of biotechnology to agricultural development in Nigeria. I am Lara Afulayo. We begin this edition of the program by taking a look at some trend in agricultural biotechnology development in the past week. Farmers in northern Ghana are now embracing a new improved variety of cowpea known as Sungotra. This is because a genetic modification for inbuilt resistance has been introduced into the crop and farmers would no longer lose between 20 to 80 percent of their crop yield to the Maruka vitrata infestation and other pests that cause low production. There is presently no known cowpea variety resistant to the pot borer and so farmers in sub-Saharan Africa regularly spray five to eight times within a season to control the pest. Scientists feel that due to the cryptic nature of feeding inside flower buds, flowers and pods, the insecticide control for Maruka vitrata is not thoroughly effective. They believe that with advances in molecular breeding, genetic modification for inbuilt resistance against this pest is the most viable option. Already, cowpea line IT86D1010 from the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture is being genetically modified by T.J. Higgins of the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization in Australia. Former National President of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, Mohamed Adams Nasiru, has dismissed concerns that genetically modified foods are harmful to humans. Nasiru says these crops do not pose any danger to humans and no one has ever died from eating them all over the world. The Farmers Association president dismisses claims that the crops are dangerous to humans and are a leading cause of carcinogenic diseases. He says farmers want good yields and this breed of crops have been proven to produce bountiful yields. An influential Chinese scientific advisory board on genetically modified crops has met in the country and agriculture watchers believe this is a sign that Beijing may be preparing to approve new biotechnology crops for import. The committee's meetings are keenly watched by seed companies because the panel typically reviews genetically modified crops approval for import. China presently allows genetically modified crop imports such as soybeans and corn for use in its animal feed industry. The African Union says it will contribute to the development of research to prevent the threat posed to farmers in Africa by the increasing presence of the corn borer grain pest. The AU in a statement says it will collaborate closely with international scientists from the Insect Institute of Nairobi, Kenya. The AU adds that its team has so far discovered that the pest has natural enemies which will be subjected to exhaustive study to find results that will eventually help to mitigate their impact. Stakeholders in the Nigerian agricultural biotechnology industry have met in the Nigerian capital Abuja to assess efforts at promoting the use of the technology for agriculture in Nigeria. AgriBaltech was there. A gathering of biotechnology and biosafety stakeholders in Abuja, the Nigerian capital. The motive is to assess the state of genetically modified crops still being nurtured in several research institutes across the country. The agencies represented here include the National Biotechnology Development Agency, the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, National Root Crops Research Institute, the National Biosafety Management Agency, and the Institute of Agricultural Research, among others. I just meeting to re strategize, you know, to draw up a roadmap of our activities. Um, to see how best we can actually um, pass the information about biotechnology around to properly educate people, to make them understand this technology better, to demystify uh, those mistakes, uh, the 
negative information being peddled around about this technology by our opponents. Um, at least to place our priorities right and and all to rob minds, exchange information, to also update, to give updates on the projects that are going on in the country presently, uh, so that everyone will be abreast. This is um, what an institution is doing, the other institution is doing this, doing that, and this is where we have reached, and whether there are challenges, and what are the challenges, and how do we um, overcome those challenges. The aim is not only to rub minds with the stakeholders in the industry and the scientists involved in the deployment of the technology, but also, more importantly, to also uh, uh, keep our, our uh, journalists and people in the press, both uh, uh, print electronic and print media, get them also to be abreast of uh, the technology and what we are doing to deploy it safely in the, in the country. The response of farmers has been great. Uh, you can even see from some of the presentations from the different uh, farmer groups, all Farmers Association of Nigeria, the Cotton Breeders Association, you can see that uh, the response from farmers generally uh, have been very good. They've been uh, quite receptive to the technology uh, because the uh, impact and the benefits uh, are uh, very uh, easy and very significant to see. Very soon we'll make sure that the technology gets to farmers in all the nooks and crannies of this country. And we'll assure them that uh, the, the products are safe, are very, very safe and uh, uh, easy to use and to adopt. And uh, that will also help to teach them and uh, prepare them for the proper ap application and use of these uh, products. Five Bow fortified crops are under confined field trials in Nigeria at the moment. They include the port borer resistant cowpea modified to resist the maruka insect, the BT cotton with resistance to the pink ball worm, Africa bow fortified sorghum with increased levels of vitamin A, iron, and zinc to address malnutrition, the nitrogen use efficient, water use efficient, and salt tolerant newest rice, as well as the virus resistant and nutritionally enhanced cassava. Participants present here who are involved with this project give an update on the situation of things. A lot of people are getting interested. You could see when you talk with farmers because those um, challenges, those constraints are real. You could see that farmers are looking forward to having it. And consumers are also beginning to have a reorientation. And of course you could see in the government agencies, there's more and more collaborations and the government agencies seem to be working together. Our intervention is actually very, very impactful. People have learned today, people have learned a lot. We know uh, the stages of um, development of each uh, project, uh, you know, like Cowpea. Um, I'm sure many of us, you know, when they came, I mean, before the presentation, didn't know which level BT copy is, which level ABS is, and what are the challenges ABS is facing, you know. So it's, it's actually, it's, it's been very impactful. The information that, the facts, the evidence that was given out here, it's something you can't get just on the internet or what, you know. The scientists are here themselves developing these crops and they've given us um, some of those data that they have generated uh, in the course of carrying out their evaluations and their trials and all. And Farmers present here who have seen the results recorded from the use of the technology for agriculture say they look forward to its commercial release. Confined trials have been held, conducted, and uh, now we're waiting for the Varietal Release Committee or Council um, to give approval for basically commercial um, 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 cultivation. Uh, immediately we're expecting that um, we'll have improved yields. Um, also, it will help us reduce the cost of our uh, production per hectare. 
Also, of course, the seed rate, you know, uh, will reduce. Uh, spraying insecticide will reduce. And um, also quality of the cotton that would be produced will also improve. During the evaluation of uh, these genetically modified uh, varieties in the field, we invite the farmers to come and evaluate the two, both the conventional uh, variety and also genetically modified variety. The farmers came there and they couldn't see any differences. The, the fear of allergic, there is no allergic reaction on the genetically modified and also the conventional system, the conventional variety. They looked very the same. The maturity was the same. The resistance to, the, to pests and diseases were almost the same. So the farmers were very free anxious to see these varieties on their hand to further cultivate because they also see the potential of the yield in the genetically modified over the conventional breeded variety. Going forward, these biotechnology stakeholders hope to better promote the efficiency of this technology's development in Nigeria. We actually expect um, an expedited action. We expect a change in our strategies. Um, we expect more impact on the society. Um, actually winning the hearts of people, winning the minds of Nigerians on this technology, being on top of all matters, making Nigerians to understand that this is a technology that's working very well in other parts of the world. Farmers are reaping benefits, farmers are enjoying, they are being empowered by this technology because of the yield increase, the profits. And so, um, once they understand this, the acceptance, uh, good policy environment, you know, we need to have the political will from the policy makers. Once the government has the political will, things will be faster, things will be easier. This gathering also provided a means to review strategies of biotechnology promotion in Nigeria and chart a way forward. Participants expect their renewed advocacy efforts to better project biotechnology as one of the fastest growing technologies in history with the ability to mitigate many of the challenges faced by Nigerian farmers. Next, I get to speak with the Chairman House Committee on Agriculture, Mohamed Monguno, on biotechnology and agriculture in Nigeria. And joining me on the program is the Chairman House Committee on Agriculture, Honorable Mohamed Monguno. It's good to have you join me on the program. It's a pleasure. You are welcome. As the House Committee Chairman on Agriculture, what is your stand on the use of biotechnology for agriculture in Nigeria? The House of Representatives and the National Assembly as a whole supports the use of biotech in our agricultural production and our agronomic practices. And that is the reason why the National Assembly first the biosafety bill, which brought about the establishment of an agency that is charged with the responsibility of uh, biosafety measures. And the House of Representatives, in its wisdom, is supporting the use of biotech in our agronomic practices, one, because of the fact that it has the potential of increasing our food production, especially against the backdrop of the fact that the government is now working hard to diversify our economy away from oil to agriculture. We need to employ modern technologies by way of biotech. One, to increase production, food production, not only to achieve food security, but also to have access that we can export 
for the purpose of earning the much needed foreign exchange that we can deploy for our infrastructure needs. How will you describe the process of passing the bio safety bill into law? Well, the, the process uh, is, is very smooth. Uh, the bio safety bill was passed with unanimity, both in the House of Reps and in the Senate, without a single voice of uh, dissent, and it was assented to by Mr. President, which led to the establishment to the National Biosafety Agency for the purpose of uh, regulating biotech activities and what a few deployment of biotech and what a few in our agricultural practices. What are the major provisions of that law for the administration of biotechnology in Nigeria? Well, the, I think the main purpose or the import of that law is to regulate the application of biotech in our agricultural practices, just to regulate it so that uh, one to make sure that the biotech crop that we are trying to introduce is in tandem with our agricultural practices and it will not accept to the environment, it will not contribute to the issues of uh, affect adver having an adverse effect on the climate and then also it has it doesn't have carcinogenic effect on human beings that are going to be the ultimate consumers of these uh, crops what will be your reaction to calls by anti-gm activists on the need to repeal or rework that law all the due process that is supposed to undergo before the passage of law has the biosafety law has gone through one, it has come for first reading, it has come for second reading, whereby extensive debate took place on the floor of the House, and then it was referred to the relevant committee where public hearing was held, and all stakeholder ca stakeholders came and gave their opinion on the frauds and cons of the bill. A report was compiled, led on the floor of the house, then it came up for consideration, and then close by close consideration of the report was done in the, in the committee of the whole by the house. It was fast. It came up for third reading. It was fast, and then a conference committee was set off to harmonize the differences of the two bills between the house and the senate. A conference committee submitted a report, and then it was presented to Mr. President for assent and of which Mr. President gave his assent. So all the due process that both constitutional and in tandem with uh, practice, our rules and regulations of the House have been followed in the passage of the Biosafety Bill into law. How much can Nigeria do with the use of biotechnology in its agricultural sector? Nigeria can achieve a lot. In fact, in modern day agricultural practice, there is no way you can achieve food subsufficiency without the employment of biotech. So Nigeria, especially against the backdrop of the fact that we are now preaching the gospel of uh, diversification of our economy away from oil to agriculture, there is no two way about it. The employment of biotech is sine qua non to the achievement of that objective. And Nigeria stands to gain a lot in the employment of biotech for, uh, to achieve food subsufficiency and also export for the purpose of needing, uh, getting the much needed foreign exchange to deploy for our infrastructure needs. You have seen the deployment of biotechnology in agriculture in several countries outside Nigeria. I know you only recently returned from the United States of America. What was the experience like? Well, seeing this technology abroad, one, I have come to realize that uh, they used 
the, the technology to increase their food production. That is why, for example, the U.S. is self-sufficient in corn, in coffee, to the extent of uh, even having access to to export it about about 15 or 20 about 15 percent of it is being exported to other countries but 80 percent of it is consumed in locally so they have as cheap subsufficiency of of uh, coffee and of corn through the deployment of uh, biotech to the extent to the extent of having access to ex ex export it what lessons do you think Nigeria has to learn from the United States in the use of biotechnology for agriculture? Well, what the, what the Niger, na, Nigeria should take a cue from them and also embrace the use of biotech in our agronomic uh, practices, as I said earlier on, to increase our yield, engage in climate smart agriculture, so that our agricultural practices cannot adversely, adversely affect our environment to preserve the environment for future generations. What is your perception of the pace of the adaptation of biotechnology in Nigeria? We, we are crawling, crawling. The first at which we are adopting this technology leaves much to be desired. There is need for the government agencies that are charged with the responsibility of uh, making sure that Nigeria adopts, embrace this technology to fast track the process and then insulate it from bureaucratic bottlenecks and bureaucratic bottle uh, red taps so that it will see the light of the day for the benefit of uh, Nigerians. You say the National Assembly as a whole supports this technology. I don't know if there are efforts at maybe the constituency level where you have this subsistence farmers to promote this technology? You know, one of the major problems we have in, in agriculture in Nigeria is the issue of extension. Uh, so there is a need to properly strengthen the extension up of our agricultural practices so that these technologies can go to the farmers at the grassroots level so that they can adopt it. And I think that is the reason why the Federal Ministry of Agriculture created a department that is specifically meant for extension. So that these technologies and other modern day agronomic practices can be extended to farmers at the local government, at the, at the grassroots level. Are you by any chance involved in farming? Yes, I'm a farmer. Okay, and I have a farm. And do you look forward to you know, adopting this technology? Yes, I'm looking forward to adopting these technologies once it is uh, allowed to be practiced, to be implemented in Nigeria. I'm looking forward to that time. My expectation of adopting this technology personally in my farm is to one, increase my yield because it has the capacity of combating uh, common fest that normally rubbish our crops thereby retarding our yield and also it will afford me to engage in climate smart agriculture. Okay. And what will be your last word to the public out there on the use of this technology for agriculture? Well my word to Nigerians generally is that they should dis disregard all this misinformation about this uh, deployment of this technology that it is not harmful to human beings, it is not carcinogenic as alleged. Then it has the potential of increasing our yield, thereby achieving food subsufficiency and also exporting it out for the purpose of uh, earning the much needed foreign exchange to deploy for our infrastructure needs. And also with increased yield and with increased farming activities, it has the potential of creating a lot of employment for our unemployed youth that uh, is now threatening to be a security threat to this country. So because of these advantages, I think I want to disabuse the minds of Nigerians that uh, this technology is not good for Nigeria, but rather it is good for Nigeria for the purpose that I've mentioned, increasing food security, export, in a way that is excess 
and also creating employment and also engaging in climate smart agriculture for the purpose of uh, combating the effect of climate change that is now knocking on our doors, especially in the northern part of the country. Very well said, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lara. Um, Lara, thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you. And it's at this point that we draw the curtains on today's edition of the show. Keep the emails coming. The email address as shown on your screen is agribaltech1 at yahoo.com. Send us tweets at agribaltech13 or comment on our Facebook page, Agribaltech on TVC. I am Lara Afolain. See you next time. <music>